Greenman. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be talking to you this morning um, about the effect of seasonality on the ranging behaviour of Irish badgers. So this ranging behaviour study is part of a larger study called the Wicklow N11 Badger Study, where we followed more than 70 badgers to date to see what effect a major road realignment project has on the badgers in its direct vicinity. So the Wicklow N11 Badger Study has followed the badgers before the roadworks, during the roadworks, and since the road has been completed. Um, the data for our ranging behaviour study has all come from the period before the roadworks, so obviously before the disturbance to the badgers. And the objective of our study was to investigate the year-round ranging behaviour patterns of male and female badgers of various ages. Also to look at the effects of season, gender and age on the movement patterns of those badgers. So we had 39 badgers, 20 males and 19 females in the study. We had three years worth of data, 34,000 GPS fixes, 405 individual monthly home range estimates. And the home range is the area an individual covers and maintains. Um, our home range estimates were based on 95% minimum convex polygons, MCP. Uh, so all our data comes from remote satellite tracking using GPS collars. And this is one of our badgers, obviously anaesthetized, wearing her GPS collar. So she's Badger 4382, also known as Michelle. <laughs> so um, this is what three years worth of data looks like on a satellite map of Wicklow, 34,000 GPS fixes. So why is the ranging behavior of badgers of interest to us? Well, as Margaret has already mentioned, badgers are highly susceptible to tuberculosis caused by Mycobacterium bovis, and the disease is endemic in the species. So their movement patterns help us to see the points of contact where disease transmission can occur between individual badgers, between badger social groups, and between badgers and cattle. And the information obtained can also be used to strategically improve badger vaccination campaigns in terms of timing, location, and target groups. So what do the GPS collars tell us? Well, the largest individual home range for a single month uh, during the study period for a male was 733 hectares, and for a female, 323 hectares. The average home range size in summer for all males across the study period was 175 hectares and all females 130 hectares. The average farm in Ireland is 33 hectares, so we can take it that um, each badger is covering between four and five farms within its home range. The average distance travelled nightly through the whole year uh, by each badger is two kilometres. But 35 out of 39 of our badgers made excursions outside of their home ranges, either into the neighbour's territory or further afield. And excursions up to 12 and a half kilometres um, have been recorded in a single night. So we also looked at the effect of the following factors on home range size. Gender, age, interaction of gender and age, day length, temperature, and then the interaction of day length, temperature, and gender. So when we looked at the interaction of gender and age, we found that male badgers, male and female badgers, had similar range sizes up to the age of two years. Now we have found that some of our females disperse at or before, before one year of age, so they're leaving their natal territory and going further afield. From two years of age, male badgers range further and males aged three to five years had the largest range sizes. So um, this chart shows you um, badger age along the bottom, um, home range uh, along the vertical axis. And you can see um, that in the first two years, male and female badgers have a similar range size, a slight peak here in year one for the females, and that's because of that dispersing that they do at that very early age. 
From the age of three then, uh, the males start to range further. Now, female badgers start giving birth to cubs at the age of three, and this will cer certainly explain the divergence in range sizes. So when we looked at the interaction of day length, temperature and gender, uh, we found that all badgers range further when the days are longest and the nights are shortest, shortest. So it's actually the converse of what you'd think. You'd think that they'd range further when it's darker for longer, but they don't. So summer ranges are the largest, June, July and August. Winter ranges are the smallest, December and January. Males range less in colder winters and hotter summers. Males reduce their winter ranging less than females. And females entered winter lethargy more consistently than males. And winter lethargy is a period, obviously in the winter, of reduced activity where the badgers seldom come above ground. So this is just a graphic example of what happened in the very cold winter of 2010-2011, um, where we had... Um, minimum temperatures of minus 12.2, 42 days of air frost and 13 days of snow. Now it started snowing in November. The coloured shapes represent um, individual badger home ranges. Um, and you can see by December when we had thick snow on the ground throughout the whole country, um, the badger ranges were down to uh, very tiny amounts, bar one individual who had a reason for uh, staying active. A number of our badgers um, recorded zero um, home ranges for the entire month of December. So they were in winter lethargy basically for between four and six weeks. Um, the thaw came in January and they started moving again. Sorry, oops, I'm moving too fast. Um, but these ranges obviously are in complete contrast to the summer months, June, July and August, where you can see that ranges are at their maximum and contiguous. Now, this is how temperature affects range sizes between years. So there's that very cold winter again of 2010, about most of the badgers barely moving, many of them not moving at all. And that compared to the much milder winter of December 2011, a lot more movement, a lot more badgers active. So this is um, our chart um, where we show the interaction of day length, temperature and gender. So you can see the females are along the bottom in red, the males on top in blue. Um, the solid lines indicate colder months, the dotted lines warmer months. So, I beg your pardon. Okay, so this part of the chart here is um, where we have little sh short days, in other words, the, the winter time. And what you'll notice here is that males range more in mild winters. Um, as the seasons go on then, this is spring and autumn, and this is winter, or this is summer over here. I beg your pardon, I'm getting very mixed up. So what's interesting here is that males range less in hot summers. In fact, their range sizes fall down to a similar level to the females. The females, on the other hand, are fairly consistent. They don't mind whether it's um, hot or cold. They'll do the same amount of ranging. Now, I just thought we'd um, have a quick look at what we actually get sent and what we look at on a nightly basis. This is a, an average male badger. Um, they start sending us signals at uh, nine in the evening and we get our last fix from them at four in the morning. So this would be a typical um, summer uh, ranging for a, for a male badger. So on the 5th of June, he did 2.9 kilometers. On the 6th, three kilometers. On the 7th, 0 0.9 kilometers. 8th, 2.9, 9th, 3.6, 10th, 1.4, 11th, 3, 12th, 1.6, 13th, 1.9, 14th, 1.4, 15th, 2.7, 16th, 2.2, 17th, 1.9, 18th, 2.6. And then after 14 days, you can actually see he's outlined his territory. So what looked like a random set of nightly movements were actually the badger both foraging and marking out his territory. Um, I mentioned to you that um, our 35 out of 39 badgers made excursions. Many of those excursions are into the neighbor's territory just to forage in a, in a nice field, but some of them are further afield. So this is one of our males who clocked up 12 and a half kilometers in a single night. So he left his set at nine. He was foraging in his home range at 10. 
Um, at that point, he traveled about four and a half kilometers, crossing two different um, territories into a third territory for 11. Now, he was back home again by midnight, um, having traveled 5.2 kilometers in straight line distance, which presumably he didn't do. Um, and he's still out and foraging in his home territory between one and three. This is another, uh, this is a female badger, one of our young females. And remember, I mentioned to you that some of them disperse very early um, before the age of one year. So um, Leah is one of those yearlings. Um, she's making an exploratory journey here. She comes out of her set at 10. Uh, she's still in her home territory at 11. She makes her move at midnight, one, two, and by three in the morning, she's crossed six different badger territories. Now, she spends the day here, so she's obviously found a set, and she emerges from that set 18 hours later, having had a good sleep. Um, so she's out at nine. She's still in that foreign territory at 10, and then she decides to head home at 11. Here she is at 12, one. She's in her home territory by two, and she's still out at three. So that was 17 kilometers uh, covered in that 29-hour period. Um, this is another one of our female badgers, and we were lucky to have a collar on her because she, uh, the day she, or the night that she left home, unlike the previous badger, she didn't make any exploratory journeys. The night she left, she never came back. Um, and what happened to her was that she mixed with 12 different social groups before finally settling in a new territory, and we were lucky because she settled in the study area just on the far side of the road. Um, but she travelled over 250 kilometres in six months, doing 180 of those kilometres in the last 11 weeks. Now, she is very happily settled now in her new territory. She barely moves at all, and she's still alive uh, with us today. So just to conclude, um, 35 out of 39 badgers made excursions outside their home ranges. Ranges were largest in summer and smallest in winter. Male badgers over three years had the largest home <coughs> ranges. Females and younger badgers of both sexes had smaller ranges, and male badgers were flexible regarding winter lethargy, that period of reduced activity. Season and especially temperature have a very strong effect on badger ranging. Current climate change models predict milder winters across Ireland and the UK, so winter lethargy may become even rarer. And climate change may thus influence the frequency of badger-to-badger -badger interactions and the dynamics of TB transmission between badgers and between badgers and cattle. Thank you. Thank you very much, Theresa. Are there any questions from the, from the audience? Gentlemen over here. Uh, Roger Blowey, uh, a practitioner at Gloucester. Uh, thank you for an excellent presentation. Uh, were you able to identify any difference in ranging behaviour between TB-infected and non-infected badgers? That's, that's a really interesting question. Thank you. Um, obviously, we um, use blood tests, um, the Brock stat pack, and we use pharyngeal swabs for culture to try and get an idea of what status our badgers were. So um, of the 39 badgers in my study, we would now be aware that five of them um, were TB infected. Um, there could be more, we just don't know yet. Um, and I would have to say that their ranging behavior did not show any difference um, to what we would consider the, the non-infected badgers. Now, all our badgers are also vaccinated at first capture, BCG. So whether that's having an effect or not, we, um, we'll have to wait and see. Because they, the data from Winchester Park would suggest the opposite, wouldn't it? So that... Um, uh, the data from Winchester Park would suggest the opposite, in that infected badgers uh, uh, do have um, different movements and are more likely to go to satellite sets and so on. Well, we certainly haven't found that... Um, we haven't found that in our area. Um, and we have done background studies in the study area where we know that the level of TB is about 19%. You know, 19% of the badgers are infected. So, you know, this, this population is, is very representative of most of the country. Um, and as I say, 
at least we know that five of our uh, study badgers were TB infected and they did not move in a, in a different kind of pattern to, or notice, noticeably different pattern to the other badgers. Thank you. And they weren't kicked out of the set either. Yeah. Jamie, do you have a question in there? Hi, uh, J Jamie Dratelos, um, C. Vera, UCD. Just how, when, when these badgers make these uh, excursions out of their own territory, sometimes very long excursions, how do they know where they're going? Do they build up a picture gradually over time or, or what? That's another great question, because obviously you have these yearlings who, who've never left their home territory before. So how do they know where to go? Um, and, and we really don't know, and we have to sur surmise that, that they're obviously using um, badger scent, um, scented paths and latrines to, to, um, to, to follow their way to where sets are. But these, these young females are phenomenal because they're traveling huge distances and they always end up at a set. So they're using signals that we, we quite simply are not aware of. Yeah, I mean, it's, you can understand how they can disperse two other sets, but how do they get back? How do they know the direction to get back? <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Yeah, maybe they and, pick and up. And obviously our, 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 our um, GPS collars only give us one hit per hour. So, you know, we don't know the movements that they're doing in, in, in between time. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting one. One more question here from this lady here. I'm Amy from the Amy Fitzgibbon from the Farmers Journal. Um, I'm just wondering how this study is feeding into the TB eradication program exactly. Or well, is I, it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I think all the questions here today are kind of telling you um, we're trying to find out, you know, how badgers move, um, how they interact with their environment. Because if we don't know that, mm. then it's very hard to advise farmers. You know, what do I do? Um, about badgers in my farm, they're coming in and out. So it's it's finding out all kinds of behaviour patterns of the badgers, so that we can then, you know, correlate that back to giving um, advice to farmers. And also, um, obviously, it'll feed in to the vaccination um, pr programmes because we can actually see where the best places are to capture badgers if you're going to capture them to vaccinate them. We also are learning that, you know, there'll be particular times of the year that'll be better for vaccination than others, um, and the target groups as well. We always thought that it was the older males that were the really important ones in terms of disease, um, TB spread and so on, but now we're realising that these really young females um, are at very high risk um, of TB because they're joining so many different social groups. Um, and obviously, they're also crossing an awful lot of roads and probably meeting a lot of motor cars too. But um, there's an, an awful lot of elements of this study that will feed into advice that we can give to farmers, but also that we can actually use ourselves to better manage the programme. 